There's a, a group of people out there that their doctrine makes me very angry. I'm not supposed to say that. It's not politically correct. But when I went to the jails and I deal with people, and when I get done dealing with people that dealt with this group of people, it fires me up. Amen. You say, what group of people is that? Crazy Maddox. Pentecostals. They foul up so many people in their Bible, and there's so much Bible doctrine that I get upset. Amen. You say, why do you do that? Because they don't believe the Bible. They use the Bible to preach doctrine, but they don't believe the Bible. You say, how do you know they don't believe the Bible? Because they use any Bible. Anything goes in their religion. And they don't care if they misquote it. They don't care if they misinterpret it. All they know is they got extra uh, curricular revelations. You know, they all sit back and think they got a revelation and therefore they have all these dreams and then it's the Holy Ghost giving them all these dreams and it's not their bad pizza that they ate. <laughs> First Corinthians 14 says in verse 26, How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation? See, they all have to have a revelation. And the thing is, is they get a vision, a revelation, they got something that's outside the scriptures, and then that becomes the standard. Right. That becomes the final authority. And it don't matter if it lines up with the Word of God. All they know is they had a dream. And I've been trying to look at stuff on YouTube and different things. People put stuff out, videos about the second coming and... and uh, the prophetic fulfillings and all these people are having these dreams and they're getting on their little Skype cameras or whatever they're doing and, and they're coming out and they're saying, well, I had this dream and listen to this lady's dream and listen to this guy's dream and, and uh, they're all believe that the, ra the rapture is going to happen in September because all these people are having these visions and dreams. They don't read the Bible. Amen? And when your Bible believer opens up the Bible and shows them what the Bible says plainly, they just, they just start flipping all their breakers, amen. They start shorting out, amen. They start blowing fuses left and right, and they don't want to really see what the book says about it. Right. You open up the Bible. Listen, I was knocking on the door one day, and uh, this guy goes, you need to talk to my wife. She's got all the religion for the family. So she comes outside, and uh, we begin to start talking to her. She goes, well, even Jesus was a sinner. Mm -hmm. I said, book, chapter, verse. Prove that to me. Oh, you're one of them guys. I said, yeah, I'm one of them guys. <laughs> See, she, she just threw something out there. She's got no ability to be able to back up what she said by Scripture and then turned around and then when I believed the Scripture and said, show me in the book, oh, you're one of them guys. <laughs> Amen. She's done razzle-dazzled her husband where he wants to sip his beer, go back in and watch his sports, and he could care less about God and Christianity because he's got some dingbat for a wife that just thinks she's got some kind of revelation and she's got all the religion for the family because she's got a big mouth and she don't know what she's talking about, but she's seen visions. She's seen all these things. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Listen, there's a bunch of religions in America that were founded by a woman. There's some that were founded by men. And all American religions are garbage. Yep. Joseph Smith wanted to commit adultery, so he created a religion called the Mormons. <laughs> he wasn't satisfied with his wife, and he wanted to have 14 or 15. Brigham Young said, man, that's a good idea, so he got him 15 wives. Yep. You, you understand what I'm saying? Those men wanted to commit adultery, so they tried to find scriptures and create a religion to do so. Right. Listen, men will take God and take the Bible and create false religions to, to produce what they want to produce. When you want to dismiss the Bible, claim you got filled with the Holy Ghost and He gave you a revelation so you can walk away from the Bible and then believe what you want to believe. Right. That's what all the charismatics do. This Sunday morning you're going to have churches full of people all speaking in some unknown tongue and some clowns going to interpret and you know what? They're going to go, oh man, the Holy Ghost talked to us. And then they're going to run to the restaurant and puff their cigarettes. Yeah. All claiming to be filled with the Holy Ghost when they're filled with Holy Smoke. So I want to help you. I, maybe it will take a few weeks, I don't know, uh, and go through some things the Lord showed me about tongues. I spent my time as an early Christian seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I, as an early Christian, began to start seeking tongues. I wanted to be able to speak with tongues. I wanted 
to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I sought all that because they told me that's where the power was. I had no idea that I could go to the Bible and find out what it really said because I was seeking some special uh, experience that was outside the Bible that uh, people were using the Bible claiming that I needed in my life. I needed this second blessing. I needed this supernatural power that all these folks got. And I went to a radio station where Charismatics were at. And when I went there, I'm in the middle of that back uh, that studio, and they anoint me in oil, and got all these people speaking in tongues. Amen. Told me to throw my hands up in the air and just start praising Jesus, and all of a sudden, anointing come on me, and nothing come on me. <laughs> Amen. And as I'm sitting there praising Jesus, loving Jesus, seeking this supposed thing that they're supposed to be able to get, I, I step backwards because they're pushing on me and everything, and I lost my balance, and they threw me on a couch thinking I was fixing to get slayed. Oh. And nothing happened. They all get up and walk out disappointed. And then the guy goes, well, you know, after we anointed you and everything, he said, uh, sometimes people have received anointing later, went to their house and different things. And I got in my truck and I'm driving home and I'm going down Route 49 in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and I'm riding along saying, God, what's the problem with me? Why can't I get this thing? Where have I messed up? What is the issue? And I'm telling you, I heard her. A supernatural voice, the little voice of the Lord. If you ever heard him talk to you, you know what I'm talking about. He said, son, you're trying to follow a stranger. He said, my sheep know my voice, and they follow me, and a stranger, they will not follow. He quoted me out of John chapter number 10, let me know, boy, you're following a stranger, leave it alone. And I never sought the charismatic experience since then, and I got into scriptures and began to search the scriptures and find out things about tongues, and I got things maybe some guys never brought out before because of the experiences and the things that I went through. I was fouled up on eternal security. I was fouled up on all kinds of things because of the Pentecostals and the free will Baptists and stuff. And I got in the Bible and I got around some Bible believers and they showed me how to rightly divide the word of truth, showed me how to get in that book and seek answers from God. I know what the book says. And I stand with what the book says, and I care less who believes anything else. And I'm talking about believing the book. I'm talking about it rightly divided. Listen, you can take any verse of Scripture and create any doctrine and religion out there you want to, if you want to take it out of context. And, uh, and uh, they add to it. They subtract from it. They take it out of context. Amen? And, uh, boy, I'm telling you what, and they explain it away. Men will take Scriptures and explain it away. They don't want to believe what the book says. And I'm going to stand with the book, and it doesn't matter if all the brethren go the other direction. Amen. God's taught me one thing in this life is to stand alone if I have to. Amen. Amen. James chapter number 3. James chapter number 3. My brethren, verse 1. Be not many masters. There we go. Amen. Everybody wants to be the man that leads the church. Amen. So how do you know? <laughs> Why do you think all church splits happen? Amen. Amen. Most church splits happen over who's going to run the thing, the authority. Knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man. Wouldn't that be a nice place to be? Wouldn't that be, listen, if you, can, if you could ever learn to speak and never offend anybody with your speech, looks like it, that's how to become a perfect man. I ain't met the guy yet. <laughs> because it ain't me. I ain't the perfect man. It seems like everything I say offends. And able to bri bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven with fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small hand, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so what? The tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our what? Members. It defileth the whole body. It setteth on fire the course of nature. It setteth on, it is set on the fire hell. Every kind of beast, of birds, and of serpents, of things of the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. Did you look at tongue right there in verse 8? Do you see the first three letters? Huh? Tongue. And I got a tongue circled and then beside it I got of problems. 
<laughs> it's a ton of problems, amen. Amen. A tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not be so. Amen. Uh, we're going to talk about tongue and tongues today. Amen. And uh, there's a bunch of different things in the scriptures about it. Amen. So we just want to be scriptural, right? We just want to be scriptural. Number one, a tongue is a member of your body. Amen. Right? I get no amens. No rights. You're not listening to me. It's a member of your body, right? It's a physical member of your body. That's what a tongue is, right? Amen. People swallow their tongue. Right? Amen. You got to understand that. These Pentecostals, they don't understand what that is. You'd be surprised. Ask them what a tongue is. And they think that's a gift that they got to jabber. Amen. It's a member of your body. Right? Number two, it's a manner of speech. You say, what's that mean? He speaketh with forked tongue. Right? It means he's double tongued. It's the way he speaks. It's a manner of speech. Right? And so you got to understand that it's a manner of speech. Listen, one of the biggest things we got when we go around this country and around this world is everybody talks different. We just had an example of it right here. Tech talk. Right? Everybody. Listen, I don't like texting language. Because people are now using that language to talk. My son does it all the time. I need a pick. What do you do? I, I think I pick something black people pick their hair with to make their afro stand up. <laughs> right? I'm not being ugly. I'm just saying, you know, they pick their hair out. Right? And Gabriel goes, I need a pick. What do you need a pick for? Well, you know, back years ago, before they had uh, ice trays, they had blocks of ice delivered to the house and had ice picks. Right? Listen, I, what's a pick? He's talking about a picture. Well, tell me a picture. That's what the whole word is. But the thing about text language today, everything's partial language, partial words, and I'm supposed to pick up on this new lingo. I can't handle it. Amen? I don't like all this newfangled talk. I'd just rather go to real talking. Amen. Amen? But it's a manner of speech. It's a way people talk, right? Briars. You know what a briar is? It's a hillbilly. You know what they like doing? Amen? I need a flare. What's a flare? I want to buy some flares. What's a flare? If a flare is something you, you break and you stick on the side of the road and your truck breaks down. When you're stranded, it's something you shoot through the air. No, a flare down there is a flower. You understand? Amen? We had a fire last night. You went afar? Where'd you go? We went afar. <laughs> What's that? I'm thinking they went afar, right? No, they, they want a fire. See, they, they, they drag their speech. They're slowing their speech. It's a manner of speech. It's hillbilly. Amen? Right? Uh, you, you go down there, you've got to learn how to speak Southern and begin to understand what they're, all, what they're talking about. Amen? It's a manner of speech. It's a way they talk. And when you go different places in the country, they all have different manners of speech. You have to discern. You have to get the gift of discernment. Amen? Amen? Next, let's go to... Acts chapter number 2. Acts chapter number 2. In fact, let's just, uh, let's go there and then go to Zephaniah. Acts chapter number 2. Acts chapter number 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with what? Other tongues. Other tongues. Didn't say unknown tongues. That tongue there is a language. You understand? And then it says, and as we finish that, as the Spirit gave them utterance, and they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men on every nation under heaven. And when the noise, this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because they heard every man speaking his own what? Language. 
<laughs> you understand? See, they're filled with tongues and they heard him speak in their own language. See, a tongue is a language. You understand? And people need to understand that. They're languages. Boy, if they don't get that, they're going to they're gonna miss something. So while we're on the subject, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, 13. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, and let's go to Zephaniah chapter number 3. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, Zephaniah chapter number 3. We'll help the Baptists that don't have, know how to preach to about the Pentecostals and preach about tongues. A Baptist has a funny interpretation of Scripture to try to dismiss tongues and what the Charismatics are doing instead of realizing what the Bible is teaching you about tongues. Amen? I like what Brother Estep said. He said, Baptists are famous for creating heresies to combat a heresy. Yeah, much up. Amen? And the way to combat a heresy is to preach the truth and show them the truth out of the Word of God, not create a heresy. And heresy is nothing more than truth misplaced. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not what? Charity. charity. The whole passage and chapters dealing with charity. Verse 8. Charity never faileth. Whether there be prophecies, they shall what? Fail. Fail. They're not. They're, what it's talking about is not coming to pass, they're all going to be fulfilled and so therefore you won't need prophecy no more. Right? When Christ comes back at the second coming, there's going to be over 500 prophecies fulfilled. Amen? They're, they're done. So prophecy is out of the way now. It's not that, it, it, that they're not going to come to pass, they're not going to come true. Whether there be tongues, they shall what? Cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall what? Vanish away. We know in part, prophesy in part, when that which is perfect has come, then that which is part done away. Now they all want to say, when the King James Bible was completed, the canon was completed, tongues ceased. That ain't what that passage is saying. That ain't what that passage is teaching. But that's the heresy that men create. That gives validity to the charismatics' false doctrines that it was one time false, and now they believe this is the latter rain, and they're getting the second blessing of the Holy Ghost. And the latter rain's dealing with physical rain yep. in one month. They get the early and latter rain in one month. You ever been over there? It's a desert. They need rain. You know what he said he's going to do in the book of Zechariah? He's going to shut the rain off if they don't want to come up and worship. It's dealing with literal rain. Now he says, whether to be tongues, they shall what? Cease. Where did tongues come from? The Tower of Babel, Genesis 11. You know what tongues are? Huh? You know what tongues are? It's a judgment. The Tower of Babel is where they came from. Tongues are a judgment. It's not a blessing. Listen, I've been to three different foreign countries. And it's not fun to try to speak to somebody you can't understand what they're trying to tell you. And then sit in a room where everybody's talking a different language and you don't know what anybody's saying. Hey Amen. I'm telling you, you talk about that. That's not a pleasant experience. And then try to talk to a waiter or a waitress or try to get directions and explain something to somebody. Listen, I, I, you can have that all you want. I can't handle it. And then I listen to these foreigners like Indians. I'm not trying to be ugly against people from India. I can't understand the tone of their voice. The pitch and the tone of their voice, I can't comprehend. I can't, I can't get a hold of that thing. Amen? I can't do it. they got to slow it down, and they got to put it down and real slow so I can pick it up. Amen? These people all want to get on there and talk 100 miles an hour. I, what did you just say? I can't get it. I just, I'm sorry. I'm slow. You understand? It's a judgment. Tongues are a judgment. He went down. He confounded their language. It was a judgment. It was called Babel. You understand? Babel. Now let's go to Zephaniah chapter number 3. We're going to interpret 1 Corinthians chapter number eight or 13, verse 8. With Zephaniah 3, 8. Therefore wait ye upon me, say the Lord, until 
Amen. The day that I rise up to the pray for my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even my fierce anger for all the earth shall be devoured with fire of my jealousy. For then, see time, see t then is a time period. It's a time element. Then will I turn the people or to the people a pure language. You know what's going to happen? Tongues are going to cease. There's going to be no more tongues. There's going to be one tongue. Amen. He's finally going to destroy Babylon. He's finally going to take care, amen, of the problem that caused all the tongues. And he's going to destroy the city and maybe the king, the original king of Babylon. You never know. He's one of the eighth, right? He's the eighth. He's one of the seven. Second coming of some king. <laughs> Could be Nimrod. But he's the problem. Hello? A pure language. Tongues are a language. Tongues are a judgment upon mankind. And one day God will lift the curse of tongues when he lifts the curse on all creation. That's the millennial kingdom. You know what that kingdom's called? One thing that people don't understand? Can I really help you today? You know what tongues are? It's a, it, tongues are a judgment, but then you know, what's, you know what's fixing to come? The new millennial kingdom. You know what it's called? A new world. The new world order will not be established until the king of righteousness comes back and establishes the new world order. But to do so, he's going to bind the devil. He's going to throw the false prophet and the beast into the pit, the lake of fire. And Satan will be bound with a great chain and cast in the bottomless pit. And then he'll, he'll totally uh, regenerate the earth. And we'll enter into a new world order. Listen, George Bush Sr. ain't bringing in a new world order. Barack Obama ain't bringing in a new world order. Listen, the Pope ain't bringing in a new world order. They're bringing in a world order. But it's still the same corrupt, vile one that's here because of the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Tongues are a judgment. He's going to a pure language. We're going back to one language. What's our, uh, one of our theme verses around here? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, right? Let's look at it. 2 Timothy chapter... Number two, Second Timothy chapter number two. This is what ninety nine point nine 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 percent of people do not know how to do is rightly divide the word of truth, and it comes from the the ability not to be able to study. Study to show thyself approved unto the brethren that you may be impressed them with all your knowledge. Ain't what it says. It says study to show thyself approved unto God. What a workman. We're to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman need not be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Verse 16. But shun profane and what? Vain babblings. That's what the charismatic movement does. They babble. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Hello. I've listened to them try to teach people to speak in tongues. Now start saying fa 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 la 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 fa 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 la 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 la. Next, you know, they just they just take off and just start spewing a bunch of gibberish. It's babbling, and Bible said it's profane. That's like cussing to God. Amen. You ever hear anybody use profanity? Profanity is profane language. And to God, when people are speaking in tongues, especially their unknown heavenly tongue, it's profanity to God. They're profaning what they say the Holy Ghost is doing. And he said to shun profane and vain babblings. Hindus speak with tongues. Buddhists speak with tongues. Mormons speak with tongues. All these false religions. All they got all this gibberish and all that other kind of junk. Amen. They brought over a kundalini spirit over there from India and these foreign mid-eastern religions and they come over here and it's a demonic spirit that's baptizing people and they're being uh, governed and given over to this spirit and they want to say it's the Holy Ghost. Yeah, right. It's profane and vain Babylons, for they will increase unto what? More ungodliness. You want to know what that movement has done? 
That movement has brought more ungodliness to American Christianity. They have taken God's standards of scriptures and holiness and threw it in a trash can. And anything goes. Man, watch Todd Bentley. My son got barred from Todd Bentley. Amen. Ain't that blessed? Right? Made a comment one of his programs. Guess what happened? They said, well, we got to get rid of this guy. <laughs> All he did is ask him what the Bible said. What about rightly dividing the word of truth? Click. He's done. They don't want to know what the Bible says. They don't want to rightly divide. Why? Because they're, they're promoting feign and profane Babylons, and it increases on the more ungodliness. Right? They used to be a group called holiness. They used to be holy. They used to have such high standards. Man, women couldn't cut their hairs. Women couldn't put on makeup. Women couldn't show a slit in their skirt. Women couldn't have cleavage. And now you go to their churches, amen, they're painted up like Jezebel. Right? Jezebel painted her face. She's the one that brought all that stuff out. You ever see what religion is called in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 2 and 3? It's after that prophet Jezebel. Why do so many people want to look like Jezebel and act like Jezebel and be like Jezebel? She's ungodly, fornicating whores, what she is. And that's what they turn Christianity into. That's what they're making the church up to be, a prostitute whore. You said, preacher, you're being too hard. I'm telling you, vain and profane babbling. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. I hate their doctrine. I hate the way they minister. I've sat, had them even sit at my own table trying to reason with them, and they're unreasonable people because I know what happened to me. And I, I've got this gift, and I don't care what that Bible says. Any Bible is the word of God. Oh, you puke. Man, you don't even know what you're talking about. They're crippled too high for crutches. They had some experience. Listen, I, I dealt with a guy that went down to Pensacola. Amen. That wasn't Bible Institute. That was down there at the Brownsville Revival. And uh, he went down there, and somebody touched him in the forehead, and he got blacked out. He got knocked out. Amen. He come back wearing a hat and said, catch the spirit. He said he was slain in the spirit, and that's where he got saved. And I said, what's the gospel? And he just stared at me. Raised in a Christian school 12 years. Raised in a Christian home, supposedly, for 25 years. Been raised in church since he was in the nursery. I said, what's the gospel? He couldn't tell me the gospel. And he claimed he was saved? Oh, my God. How can you be saved and not know what the gospel is? Because somebody touched him and his lights went out. He got knocked out, so therefore God must have touched him because he got zapped. You know how many people got zapped down there? Over half a million people got zapped down there, and they all claim it's the greatest revival sweep in America because 500,000 people all had their lights knocked out. And it was some people going back over and over and over, running down the aisle and going zap, zap, right? Benny Hinn doing all that stuff. People come up, and he just blows on them, they're falling over, and they're all claiming they're getting saved. That's, that's hogwash. They don't read their Bible. I'm telling you, man, it's bad. 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. You said, you're not going to win nobody the way you're talking this morning and, and win a charismatic. Listen, if they want the truth, they'll stick around and listen. The proof they don't want the truth is because they don't want somebody to tell them they're wrong. A wise man receiveth rebuke. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, 14, verse 11. Therefore, I, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a what? Barbarian. A barbarian. And he that speaketh unto me, uh, uh, he that speaketh shall be a bar barbarian unto me. So we see they're, babbl they're babbling barbarians. Right? Because you can't understand what they're saying. Right? 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. Paul's addressing the Corinthians. This is the group he's talking to, right? Hello? Yeah. They're babbling. Barbaric. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak on, a, on the spiritual, but as on the carnal, even as on to? Babbling, barbaric, 
babies. That's exactly what they are. <laughs> Amen. They're the biggest thumb-sucking, whining crowd I've ever seen in my life. And they cause more trouble. I go into jail, you try to reach them. I know preachers that quit their jail ministries because of the mess that charismatics were making. I ain't going to quit preaching to those people because of that. You understand what I'm saying? But they're babbling, barbaric babies. And they are destroying churches. They have destroyed churches. They think they got something. God has given them an unholy spirit to commit those kind of things because they don't want the truth. They reject the divine revelation of God. And he's allowing those men to have a false spirit. He said, I don't believe that. All right. Let's look in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. I just believe the book. I accept what the scriptures teach about it. Verse 3, But I fear lest by any means the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that's where? In Christ, verse 4, For he that cometh preacheth who? Another Jesus. So that means out there today on the airwaves and on the television in your Christian bookstores, somebody's preaching a different Jesus than the Jesus of the Bible. I didn't get no amens on that one either. Amen. You better be careful. There's a one billion people today that are going to go and receive a cookie. And they're going to eat that wafer called the host, the Eucharist, in the mass. And when they put that piece of bread on their tongue, they're saying, receive Christ. They think they're actually eating the literal flesh of Jesus Christ. That's a different Jesus. The man that's offering it to them has been given the power to be able to forgive sins and Jesus is the only one to forgive sins, so they're in the place of Jesus, so they believe they're Jesus. That's a different Christ. And then the man that's in Rome, that's coming over here in September, amen, the, the black and white papa, the pope, is coming over here, and when he comes, they claim he's God on earth, the substitute vicar of Christ, the substitute son of God. They believe he's the son of God, God in the flesh coming here. Oh, my soul. A bunch of wine bibbling, fornicating, pedophile people claiming to be Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, how sick. A different Jesus. The Mormons have a different Jesus. Another testament of Jesus Christ of the Latter day Saints. A false Jesus. You understand? I'm telling you, there's a bunch of them out there, and people are swallowing them hook, line, and sinker. It's not the Jesus of the Bible. Next. Whom we have not what preached. Or if receive who? Verse 4. Receive who? Another spirit. I'm telling you, they're receiving a spirit that's not the Holy Ghost. But they're calling them holy. And they give invitations for people to come down and now you receive the Holy Spirit. Now you must come down and receive the Holy Ghost. Because they use over there in the book of Acts, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? That ain't talking to somebody in 2015. Right? That ain't what Paul was dealing with in Acts chapter number 19. He was dealing with a bunch of people who only knew John the Baptist and baptism. And he said he wanted to teach them the truth about something. And when they spake in tongues, it was convinced everybody else, those unbelieving Jews around them, that they got it. We'll get into that a little bit later. You understand? Go to Jerusalem and tarry until you be endued on high with power. And so all these Pentecostal churches and a bunch of Baptists now are getting into it and they're all chasing the so-called Holy Ghost. Amen. And I'm not against the Holy Ghost, but I'm talking they're chasing some spirit. They're not chasing the Lord Jesus Christ. They're chasing an endowment and a, and a, an empowering that's supposed to come from this new baptism. And this baptism they're seeking is not of the Holy Ghost. Because Holy Ghost baptism ain't what the charismatics and everybody's turned it into. Amen. Right? Watch it. Which you have not received or another gospel which you have not accepted. Verse uh, 13, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into who? The Apostle Christ. I've seen Richard Roberts do that, Kenneth Copel do that, and other people do that on the radio. They said, Kenneth, when you grabbed that microphone, uh, the power of God came on you and you was transformed. 
transformed. And then when you can't pass that on to Richard, Richard received that, and he was transformed. And, and the Holy Ghost said, you see what they're doing? I said, yeah, they're making themselves the apostles of Christ, and they're doing this all this entertaining act to convince the suckers sitting in the audience that they got some super anointing they ain't got, and if they were as close to God as they were, they'd come and get the anointing they got. The whole thing about the charismatic movement, it's always belittling the people in the pew. You're too stupid, too dumb to get what I got. And if you really had faith and really had what I got, then you'd be as spiritual as I am too. So therefore, dip out all your money and pour it on the altar because I'm a God. Yeah. Amen. I'm telling you, that's a bunch of garbage. Bunch of stinking clowns. And you know what? People go in there hook, line, and sinker and follow them because they quote a few little Bible verses and then people won't want to sit in church and read the Bible and learn how to rightly divide it. And no marvel that Satan himself is transformed into what? Ain't, uh, Satan can come and appear as a man of light and walk into people's hospital rooms and stand at the end of their bed and everybody believes Jesus showed up there. When's the next time Jesus showing up? Where? In the clouds where? In the air. He ain't walking in hospital rooms. <laughs> All these people claim they've had some kind of experience and somebody walked in, some angelic being walked in and he's full of light. I'm telling you, they've got the wrong one walking in. And they better rebuke him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because that ain't what the Bible says about Jesus Christ. This is a hoax, a false experience, and the devil is brainwashing people. Well, I know what I seen. It stood at the foot of my bed. It was so glowing and peaceful and kind. You had a devil! Jean Dixon laying in bed and said a serpent came up and coiled around her body and came up and stared in her eyes. And she was in dude and power. And she's some kind of psychic. And then all the world goes and follows a satanic psychic. Amen. Because she can say all these different things and they're all coming to pass. Oh, puke. A serpent looked her in the eyes and she received power. I'm telling you, you better be careful. The Mormons got their revelation from the angel Moroni. And Joseph Smith got golden tablets. And the Islam, they got their revelation from an angel. Right? Amen. Gabriel had six, he was 600 feet tall, had all these wings. Hello? And now you got Islam. Religion is founded on angels. And Paul said, though we are an angel, preach any other gospel unto you. Let him be what? Accursed. Accursed. I don't want no angel coming to my room and manifesting himself to me. Amen. Amen. I don't mind guardian angels protecting me, but I don't want them to manifest himself to me. Yeah. <laughs> huh? You say, Why? Because I'm going to, according to my Bible training and believing, I'm going to believe they're false. If they're a minister in spirit there to protect me, I ain't interested in manifesting himself. <laughs> Hello? Mm -hmm. Jesus comes in as the angel of the Lord comes down and makes an appearance to me. That's not right. Mm -hmm. Now, he makes a mid-trip appearance to the Jews. The signs are for the Jews. He's going to show up to the Jews in the tribulation. We're not in the tribulation, and I'm not a Jew. Mm -hmm. So whatever walks in the room... Hi, man. I'm telling you. I've been trained according to scriptures to dismiss it. These people are accepting it. They're getting extra revelations. They're going through experiences and think that's the Holy Ghost and they're leading multitudes astray and they're destroying the true church of the living God. And they accept any Bible translation as the Word of God. They, they're all coming together ecumenically. And Kenneth Copeland has got the gift of the Holy Ghost and full of the Holy Ghost is now addressing and accepting Holy Papa, which is a type of the Antichrist. Billy Graham taking us all back to Rome. Kenneth Copeland taking us back to Rome. Rick Warren, everybody's trying to take all the church and everybody back to Rome. It's false. Yeah, they all got a gift, though. They all stand around and go, blah, 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 blah. You know, I'll speak in tongues for them. <laughs> you can interpret that one, can't you? Amen. <laughs> Therefore, is no great thing if his ministers be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. You see that clown, Todd Bentley? Todd Bentley, amen, is warped, he's twisted, he's vile, he's wretched, but multitudes are eating out of his hands. 
He ain't got the Holy Ghost. He ain't got the, the power of Jesus Christ. He's been baptized and ordained and anointed by the devil. And a devil would never, or Holy Ghost would never tell a man to take and kick a woman in the face to receive the power of God. Uh, if he walked in this church, I want to drop kick him. He thinks it's the Holy Ghost telling him to drop kick people and hit a man with stage four cancer and knock him on the floor and knock his teeth out and body slam people and kick an old woman in the face. I'd like to plant my boot somewhere, buddy. Amen. Well, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. He ain't got it, man. And people are swallowing that stuff up, hook, line, and sinker. Oh, man, I'd love to just go stomp him just for that old woman's sake. And she ain't my grandma. I'm glad it wasn't my grandma. He would have had a visit. And it wouldn't have, I just wouldn't have been the only person going. They don't want to meet Coach Fire. <laughs> Amen. And he's got a crew of buddies that help him. Amen. Therefore, no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as minister of righteousness. Listen, Satan's men come in and they're counterfeits. And they have counterfeit Bibles, they have counterfeit spirits, they have counterfeit Jesuses, they have counterfeit Gospels, they got counterfeit apostles, they got counterfeit signs and wonders. The whole stinking thing's counterfeit. And these people are buying it up hook, line, and sinker. Why? Because they use the name of Jesus. And they use his Bible. And they use words like Holy Bible and Holy Ghost. And, they're, and I'm not against the Holy Bible or the Holy Ghost. I'm for the true one, the real one. But these people are accepting counterfeits. Amen? What's the... What's the let's go to Acts 26. Acts 26. What's going to be that pure language? Acts 26. Acts 26, verse 13. And at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining around me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying, in what? The Hebrew tongue. Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? For it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Jesus, from heaven, was talking to Paul in a heavenly language, and that heavenly language was Hebrew. Isn't that something? In Revelation 19, all heaven's shouting over there, and they're going, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You know what that is? Praise ye the Lord in Hebrew. Amen. Hello? Amen. So he's going to return the whole world to one language. Now, let's go to Mark 16. Mark 16. We're studying tongues. A tongue is a physical member of your body. A tongue is a manner of speech. A tongue is a language. Amen. One day we're going back to a common language. All the languages came about as a judgment. Right? And confounding confusion. Right? God is not the author of what? Confusion. All that confusion can be removed when God takes us all back to a pure language when the curse is removed. Mark chapter number 16. Mark chapter number 16. He said in verse 15, He said unto them, Go ye in all the world, and preach what? The gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be what? Saved. He that believeth not shall be what? Do they know the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection right there? That's not the Pauline gospel. Now we use that for the Pauline gospel. But they were taught to preach the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom had baptism in it. You understand? The gospel of the grace of God does not have water baptism in it for salvation. Hello. Amen. That's what's messing everybody up. Now watch this. Verse 17. These signs shall follow them that what? Believe. In my name they shall what? Cast out devils. They shall speak with what? 
new tongues. What is that? What's a new tongue? It's a new language. They're going to speak with new tongues. You know when that happens? This is Mark 16. Is that verse 17? You know when that happens? In Acts chapter number 2. Four, four through what? Eight. They speak with new tongues. Peter speaks with a new tongue and the miracles in the ear. Those people hear. You understand? Speaking what? 4 through 13. They hear him speak how? In their own language. And they said, verse 7, Acts 2, 7, And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak out lands? How we hear every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. Parthenians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Fergie and Pamphylia and Egypt and in parts of Libya and about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, do we hear them speak, amen, in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Amen. Acts 2 uh, verse 4 to 13. It's their own language. It's their own tongue. The gift that God gave them was the ability to be able to speak in a language that was foreign to them. Amen. But the Holy Ghost gave it to them and the people could understand them in their tongue. We know a young Pentecostal sat, sat at my house, is going over to China, and he's got to go through language school. That ain't miraculous, supernatural Holy Ghost power he had in Acts 2. But they want you to think he's got Acts 2, but then he's got to go over there and study a language. Yeah. Amen. If the Holy Ghost gave a man power, I could go to China and preach today in English, and they would hear in Chinese. Yeah. That's the work of the Holy Ghost. What they're claiming, listen, all them people, all those charismatic uh, missionaries must go and study languages. That's not Acts 2. That's not the gift of the Holy Ghost. They got counterfeits. Yeah. Verse 18, they shall take up serpents. Let me ask you a question. When you take up a serpent, what happens? Yeah, it'll bite you, but what would happen if you were full of the Holy Ghost? It turned into a rod like Moses, wouldn't it? Well, you want to show me you got the power of God? Oh, there's a cobra in your church service. All right, grab him, turn him into a stick. Yeah. yeah, okay, I'd believe you got it then. Right? That's what Moses did. Right? Paul got bit by a serpent. He got bit by a serpent, but the thing was, it wasn't, he wasn't taking up a serpent to show the supernatural power of God. He was bitten and it didn't phase him and he shook it off through in the fire. And God used that thing. Paul wasn't trying to put on a circus act in a church building. That thing jumped out of the fire and bit him. Right? You understand? There's a difference. So if these guys got the gifts, these, these people that go around and say they got snakes, which another snake handler just died. Right? Isn't that a blessing? After they keep them in a cold air and docile, they don't want them in a 100 degree room and come walking in. Hello? There's some guy on video on YouTube, you can watch it, he, he's in India or someplace, and he walks into this whole cobra pit. Yeah, you talk about something demonic, man. This guy walks in, and I mean, there's, there's hundreds of cobras everywhere. And he's walking, picking them up, throwing them around, picking them up, petting them on the head. They're biting at him. He grabs and looks at them, throws them, and they're all coming around. Not one time does he get bit there. You talk about something spooky. Uh. I mean, <laughs> and him and another guy in there, and they're picking them up, and they're throwing some in the bags, and they're doing... I see, and then another guy's in there sweeping, raking them up, and there's just cobras everywhere. Yeah, I challenge some of these Pentecostals to go over there and see what that guy's doing without the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Crazy. But I'm talking about what happens. Listen, Moses was filled by, with the Spirit of God. Amen. He was a prophet. And he reached down and he picked that serpent up and became a rod. He threw it down again and became a serpent. They went in Egypt. Aaron's holding the rod. Threw the rod down. Guess what happened? Turned into a serpent. Guess what happened? It ate those magician serpents. And then picked it back up and became a rod. Amen. That's the power of God. You want to put on a show? Pick up a serpent. Watch him turn into a stick. Amen. <laughs> if they drink any deadly thing, it shall what? Shall not hurt them. Boy, I'm stuck. I'm already running out of time. <laughs> Right? And shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall what? There's no such thing as prayer faith, is there? 
If they got what God claims they got, they can touch any sick person. That person automatically will recover. No misfires, no mistakes. Ain't got nothing to do with them praying. Ain't got nothing to do with anointing at all. They touch, they heal. They touch, they heal. All right? You got the gift, boy? Meet you down at the Children's Hospital. <laughs> I'll video record it. We'll bring our video cameras, and you go down through, and you start touching every one of them children, raising them up. And we'll hit every children's hospital in this country. You wouldn't get out of the state of Ohio before you were a multi-trillionaire and they're flying them in on planes and everything else to come see you. Instead, they want to rent the Nunner Center and some kind of calcium and put on hocus pocus and do all this big old circus act and try to tell you to throw all your money in to show God your seed faith, prove to God, get your blessing today, sow to the Spirit, amen, and you'll get your blessing. And then after that clown, that knucklehead, that idiot, that fool, that fake leaves, buses are loaded with crippled kids and handicapped people. They can't get out of their own way and they're ushered back to nursing homes and living rooms and hospital beds because these faker phonies are false. They can't heal nobody. And they're all around, running around sporting these verses. They're liars. I want to bring a bottle of poison here. Because the Bible said in Revelation 2, 2, you've tried them which say they're apostles and found them to be liars. You can drink any deadly thing. Drink up, boy. They won't do it. We're not going to tempt God. No, you're a fake. Before I leave and shut down, let's look at verse 12. Verse 12, and after that he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into a country. That's the road of Emmaus. Verse 13, and they went and told it to who? The residue, neither what? Believe they them. And afterward he appeared unto who? The eleven. And as they sat at meat, he upbraided them for their what? Unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Listen, he's talking to them that believe. He's talking to the 11. And those of you of 11 that believe, if you believe me, you'll possess this supernatural apostolic power. 2 Corinthians 12, 12, the signs of an apostle. This is apostolic. Jesus Christ, Hebrews 3, 1, was an apostle. They had apostolic signs and wonders and power. There ain't no clown professing to be a preacher today in these apostolic churches and out there anywhere possessing what these guys say they got. It's false. It's fake. It's phony. Amen. Signs are for the Jew. These are Jewish signs. These are sign gifts. And he told them, you won't speak in unknown tongues. He said, you'll speak in new tongues. Father, we love you. I ask you to bless now in Jesus' name.